Hello, Merry Christmas. It's a time to be happy. It's a time to give. And more than that, it's a time to forgive. Have you heard this nice little story called A Christmas Carol? It was written by the famous Charles Dickens. I thought it might be a nice story to share these few days before Christmas. It was Christmas Eve. The streets of London buzzled with joy. The air filled with the Christmas spirit of giving and forgiving. Close to it all, Ebenezer Scrooge sat inside his dank office, counting his money and wincing at the revelry outside. Humbug! He muttered as he saw a bright young man at the door. It was his nephew Fred with his beaming smile. Merry Christmas, Uncle Scrooge, Fred sang and opened the glass door, setting off the bells chiming. Stopping his counting midway, Scrooge scowled. Get lost and take your Merry Christmas with you, Fred. The smile remained on Fred's face. I can see you're in a foul state, Uncle, but don't forget you're invited to join us for Christmas dinner. Saying that, Fred left and the warmth left with him. Scrooge said, I'm back again and went back to counting his money in the cold office with the dim fire. At the other desk in the room, his clerk, Bob Cratchit, was putting away the accounts book, hastening to leave home early. He pulled a scarf around his neck and rubbed his hands and stood before the master. So you wish to stay home for Christmas, eh? asked Scrooge. Bob stuttered, uh, I, uh, I, would, I would dearly love that, sir. Why should I pay you for sitting at home, Bob? If you must be home for Christmas, then stay longer today and return early the day after to make up for your absence. Scrooge ruled. Scrooge ruled. Poor Bob gulped, put his scarf tighter around his neck to place for the cold and resumed his work. The one coal that Scrooge allowed him on the fire was already dying. The room was freezing and silent but for Bob's pen scratching and Scrooge's coins clinking. Clang! The bell rang again. Clang! The bell rang again. It was another unwelcome visitor at the door. Merry Christmas, said the portly gentleman in a sing-song voice. Scrooge looked up and muttered, Is Christmas merry? Hmm? Why so? It's a time for goodness, sir. I'm collecting for the homeless children so that they might be fed and sheltered this Christmas. Why? Are there no shelters in this town? There are plenty, sir, and full too, the man said. Then they have no need of my charity. Get lost, grumbled Scrooge and shooed the stunned gentleman away. In the distance, Bob Cratchit coughed at his desk, despairing. His employer was a selfish, uncaring, cold, lonely sinner. The one coal had long died and Bob reached for another when the miserly Scrooge snapped. Leave that coal alone and go join the fools outside, Bob, he shouted. Bob was surprised and hurried with his coat and scurried to the door, saying, Thank you, sir, and a merry Scrooge scowled, humbug, and went back to his loneliness until his candle had burnt out completely. He then locked the cash box and stepped out to close the shop. The sign above the door read Scrooge and Marley, even though Scrooge's partner Jacob Marley had been dead for seven years. Scrooge hadn't painted out the Marley. Why would one waste money on the dead, he thought. Shoppers sometimes called him Scrooge, sometimes Marley, and he answered them the same, although Marley was truly dead. Scrooge stepped out into the street 
distressed by the cheerful faces of the people lugging gifts home, hurrying to their loved ones, looking forward to their Christmas. Although they ignored him, he felt attacked by their happiness and by their smiles as they pierced him. A young man singing Christmas carols was walking slowly towards him. Scrooge slunk away in horror and hid in a shop until the boy had passed. He reached home, taking a longer route than usual, avoiding the Christmas carolers. He slid his cold key into the lock and reeled back in a daze. For the brass knocker on the door, it had a face, the face of dead Jacob Marley. Scrooge rubbed his eyes and stared. The cold eyes at the doorknob stared back at him. Impossible! Nonsense! he muttered and slammed the door behind him and went inside his gloomy house. He chose not to light a candle. Darkness was cheaper and he liked it dark, dank and doleful. Feeling his way up the stairs, Scrooge crept into his bed and drew the covers tight over his head. It was cold, dark and still, no sounds other than his breathing. But the vision of dead Jacob Marley kept him engaged and disbelieving. And then he stirred, hearing a tinkle. His eyes widened, and then he heard a loud a jangle. It was the old rusty bell in his bedroom swinging wild and mad. Clang, 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 clang. And it wasn't just the bell, there were noises outside the bedroom. And then the door blasted open and let in a shot of cold wind. Scrooge sat up petrified. Shaken to the bones, in the pitch darkness stood the spirit of Jacob Marley. His ears were cold, his eyes cold and piercing. His body was entangled in chains and covered with cash boxes which were clanging whenever he moved. Nonsense, muttered Scrooge. Just a bad dream. I must have had too much cheese. And he went back to sleep. No, Scrooge, this is real, the spirit whispered and clattered its chains, clang, 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 clang. Scrooge yelped, see these chains, it asked, I see, said Scrooge, hear my words, yes, I hear. These past seven years, I have been sleepless, restless in sorrow. I now suffer and pay for being selfish when I was alive. The spirit spoke like a lonely, sad breeze. Come back, bad dream, said Scrooge and rubbed his eyes again. Listen, look outside the window the spirit said scrooge looked out in horror the sky was filling up with spirits all chained and wailing like marley you still have a chance to escape this fate scrooge marley was now really close expect three more spirits tonight no, please, no, begged Scrooge. Expect them, the spirit said and vanished. Sweating, Scrooge slipped back into his bed. He was awakened by the clock chiming one and a bolt of lightning filled the room. Scrooge's heart thumped. He saw a small form with a boy's face, but long grey hair and the limbs of an old man. A bright fountain of light was shining over his head. Who are you? Scrooge asked, partly in fear. The ghost of Christmas past, it said. Whose past? Your past. I come to do you good. Come with me. It walked to the window and said to Scrooge, Touch me. 
Scrooge obeyed and found himself flying out the window through the night sky, the boy beside him. They flew through London's mist over beautiful fields filled with snow. Many happy children were playing, laughing, having fun. Scrooge looked down in wonder. I grew up there, somewhere. I grew up there. And then they saw a cold classroom, empty, but for one boy was reading. Scrooge sobbed. That's me. That's me. Lonely Ebenezer. I spent Christmas all alone with only my books and the cold. Only my books and the cold. The spirit looked at him and said, Until? Scrooge then remembered, Until my sister Fan took me home. As he said that, the boy in the classroom became older and a girl walked in and hugged him. She said, Father has been kinder and he has agreed to bring you back home forever. She smiled and they wept with joy. Tears rolled down the miserly Scrooge's cheeks now. My dear sister, she was a wonderful woman, he told the spirit. Do you remember she died some years ago leaving a son behind? Yes. My nephew, Freddy, Scrooge heaved a sigh and wished he could speak with Fred. The spirit snapped its fingers and hurried Scrooge on. A new scene emerged. Scrooge saw himself dancing to melodies being played on a fiddle. Around him, many others were clapping, drinking, prancing and helping themselves to the turkey and ham and pies and Christmas cake and beer set up on the tables. And then a fat, jovial man stepped in and smiled at the young man Scrooge and said in a booming voice, Scrooge, my boy, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Old Scrooge instantly made out Mr. Fezziwig, his old employer. The spirit asked, was he a good man to work for? The best, said Scrooge. He had the power to make us happy or sad, and he always chose to make us happy. A generous man, he sighed, his thoughts fleeting back to Bob Cratchit. The spirit clicked its fingers again, and a new scene came into view. A pretty young lady was weeping, returning a ring to a grim-faced Scrooge sitting next to her. You are no longer the boy I loved, she said. You think only silver and gold. Your heart is now cruel, cold. The young man argued, but it's money we need for the future. No, it's love we need more than money. I'm sorry, but I can no longer marry you. She returned the engagement ring and left. The jilted man put the ring back into his pocket. Please, please stop this torment at once, cried old man Scrooge. Now he was on his knees. The spirit turned and vanished, leaving him alone, sobbing in the cold darkness of his room. Scrooge woke up again to the chime. The door burst open and a giant man in a green robe strode inside. He had a flowing beard and a friendly face. Who are you? asked Scrooge. I am the ghost of Christmas present, the spirit said in a cheerful voice. I was told to expect you. Please teach me your lessons squeaked Scrooge. The spirit put his arm over Scrooge's shoulders and took him into the streets of London amidst people who were playing with the snow. The shops were bustling, people were buying onions and apples and turkey and goose skinned on skewers. Church bells were ringing and crowds gathered around. For Christmas had come, the spirit took Scrooge to a little street 
where Bob Cratchit lived. They walked through the door into the kitchen. Bob had a small boy on his shoulders and was readying the table for dinner. His wife in worn out clothes, helped by their eldest son and daughter, brought out the steaming pudding and potatoes in. The food had a heavenly smell. Bob put his little boy Tiny Tim down. Tiny Tim had an angel's face. He was frail, weak and walked on crutches as he helped his father set the table. Then Bob's wife brought out the goose. It was too small for the family but set with pride as they sat down to pray. Tiny Tim said, we are all so fortunate to have each other. I hope I can be stronger in spirit than in my legs and that I can do some good in this world for as long as I stay in it. And he sang a prayer of thanks. Bob fought his tears down and held Tiny Tim's little hand in his. Merry Christmas to us all. God bless us all. They said at once. Scrooge looked at the spirit. Tell me, will Tiny Tim die? The spirit said sadly, Well, I see a vacant chair next Christmas. No, please spare him, please, please spare him, cried Scrooge. The spirit's voice was stern. Haven't you said a poor man dead is one mouth less to feed? I wonder who deserves to die more, you or poor tiny Tim. Scrooge hung his head down in shame. The spirit pointed at him again to the table. The son was asking Bob, Why should we drink a toast for that unfeeling Scrooge father? Bob explained, Because it is Christmas and because he is all alone, son. But he has been so mean to you, he made life so hard for us, said Tim. Bob patted Tiny Tim's cheeks. It's okay, son. At Christmas of all times, we should forgive. And so they raised their glasses and said solemnly to Mr. Scrooge. And then they lit up with laughter. The spirit brought Scrooge home and left. But Scrooge could no longer sleep. Images of Tiny Tim kept spinning in his eyes and kept him awake. The clock struck again. This time, a hooded form came into view, dressed in black. It looked dreadful and had only one white bone in place of the arms. But Scrooge was less scared now. Are you the spirit of Christmas yet to come? He asked. The spirit was silent and snapped its fingers and pointed to the door. Scrooge saw Bob Cratchit's living room. His wife and eldest son were talking. Tiny Tim's crutches, Tiny Tim's crutches rested against the wall next to the fireplace. Father is sad these days and silent. He misses Tiny Tim. Why, mother, was Tim his favorite? asked the son. Bob's wife said, I suppose because he was so light to carry and he had so little time left that your father gave him more time and more love, son. She wiped a tear. Right then, Bob walked in and they asked him why he was late. I had promised I'd visit his grave every week. Bob said, he then saw the crutch and broke down, my dear Tim, my dear Tim. The children ran to comfort him, wrapped their arms around him and covered his face with kisses. Children, we must never forget tiny Tim. His generous, gentle attitude, his nature should guide us all. Bob said, yes, father, it will and we shall never forget our brother Tim. Scrooge wept like a child. Please take me away from here, he wailed. The spirit then pointed to another street where two well-dressed men were talking. 
I know them, said Scrooge. They do business with me and they hold me in high regard. The two men passed Scrooge still talking. The taller one said, well, no one's going to mourn his death. And quite a few might actually celebrate, for they won't have to repay their debts. The shorter one replied, Yeah, I passed by his office this afternoon. His servants had taken away everything, even the curtains and even the blankets and the clothes on his dead body. It lay there alone, unwanted. Even the rats wouldn't sniff him. Very true. The world is happier without him, said the tall one. Scrooge looked at the spirit and asked, Who are they talking about? And the spirit snapped its fingers and showed a graveyard and the newly engraved headstone. The name on it was Ebenezer Scrooge. Scrooge buckled and fell on the ground. Please, please say that this can change. Please say that this can change. I will honor Christmas with all my heart. Keep its spirit every day. Please don't end it like this. Please, please don't end it like this. Scrooge awoke next morning and saw he was alive. His clothes and blankets were still over him. His heart, his heart beat with joy and gratitude. He felt light as a feather and happy as a lark. Outside, Christmas bells were still jingling. It was a bright day. Scrooge dressed quickly and ran out, forgetting his shoes. Merry Christmas, he said to his doorknob and stunned his neighbors. He then saw a boy and beckoned him over. Hey boy, take this money and buy the biggest turkey you can find and take it to Bob Cratchit's house and keep the change. Merry Christmas. Still in his socks, he ran about in the snow covered streets, shouting to everyone, Merry Christmas, God bless you all. People wondered what happened to this man. Later, he went across to Bob's house and peered through the window. The giant turkey that he had sent across was ready to be served. Scrooge looked around for a tiny Tim, but couldn't find him anywhere. Until he heard a tiny squeak and Tim's head showed up above the turkey. Scrooge barred through the door and picked up the boy and cried, Tim, my precious boy, I'm glad you're still here. I'm glad you're still here. Tim stepped back in horror. In the distance, Bob stood trembling. Surely the boss had gone mad. He grabbed hold of the carving knife and walked towards him just in case. Bob, I am raising your salary this Christmas, Scrooge said and grinned. It took a while for Bob to accept that all was well with Mr. Scrooge. An hour later, Scrooge remembered that Fred had invited him over for dinner. He rose from the fireplace, setting down Tim, who had sat beside him all along. Kissing the cratchits on the cheeks, he trod off in his stocking feet, shouting Merry Christmas to everyone he came across on the roads. And he never felt cold that evening, even though it was freezing and snowing. Merry Christmas and God bless you.